Okay, as I said, classification of material based on their dimension leads to the introduction of nanostructures like quantum dots, nanowires, and nanotubes. It's based on the fact how many dimensions of a nanomaterial stands at the nanoscale. Then we have zero-dimensional, one-dimensional, and two-dimensional nanostructured materials. Basically, we call a material three-dimensional if all three dimensions of that material fall into the bulk level. And by the bulk level, we mean relatively large dimensions compared to the nanoscale, actually. Bulk level here does not necessarily mean meters or even centimeters. I mean, even hundreds of uh, micrometers could be considered as the bulk level for us. It depends on our modeling and the fact that properties still follow Newtonian rules at those bulk uh, side directions of that material. Okay, under the same deduction, two-dimensional materials is a material that its two dimensions still remain large and only one dimension is reduced to the nano range. Such structures are like very thin sheets, which are so-called nano sheets. A well-known example of a nanosheet is graphene, the thinnest two-dimensional material in the world. It consists of the single or multi-layers of car carbon atoms within a hexagonal lattice. Thin film and uh, nanocoatings are kind of two-dimensional nanomaterials as well. Nanosheets may result in exciting features, like if you remember the application of energy harvesting from small motions, that was the capability coming from the properties of the phosphorus nanosheets, actually, if you remember. I have allocated one lecture about graphene and other lectures about the nano coating in this section and to let you know more about the two-dimensional materi materials. So just be patient and follow up to discover more. A one-dimensional nanostructure is a structure that only one dimension is relatively large while two others are at the nano range. Nano wires and nanotubes are some of the na one-dimensional nanostructures actually. One-dimensional nanostructured materials are kind of quasi one-dimensional materials in fact. If you remember we discussed that due to the size and the limited number of atoms of a nanomaterial quantum confinement happens and electrons cannot move freely as they do in the bulk material. So for the case of nanowires and nanotubes as the one dimensional uh, nanomaterials because of their special structure electrons and photons can only propagate through the lengths. This makes them very interesting for nanoelectronics and optical applications to be used as a very, very thin and long enough wire in electronic integrated circuits. In fact, one-dimensional nanostructure are the smallest structure that can effectively transport electrical carriers. On top of that, the lengths of these structures can be extended to hundreds of micro meters and would connect nano-level system to macroscopic level. And surprisingly, no other known material can produce such extreme length to dimension ratio, millions of times longer than what they are wide. Because of this, the wires, nanowires have an extremely high ratio of surface area to volume. That makes them very good as a detectors because all of the surface area can be treated to bind with specific chemical and biological molecules. The electrical signals generated by that bonding then can be easily transmitted along the wire. Very cool capabilities, I like it myself. And in addition, materials that uh, don't ordinarily mix easily can be ground together in a nanowire form. For example, Layers of the silicon and germanium, two widely used semiconductors, are very difficult to grow together in thin films, but in nanowires, they can be ground without any problem. And this is one of the important applications of nanowires, to use them as a junction or cross nano devices. Nanowires could be made of metals, semiconductors, oxide materials and they could be multi-segments too. Regarding nanotubes, carbon nanotubes is the most known nanotubes with special properties and I have allocated one lecture to talk about carbon nanotubes. 
All right, let's move to the next nanostructures. And that's the case when all three dimensions of a nanomaterial fall into the nanoscale. Such nanomaterials are considered zero dimensionals and often called nanoparticles. Yes, nanoparticles that we refer to them a lot are zero dimensional nanostructures. And when it comes to nanoparticles, we have a variety of nanostenes from metal to semiconductor nanoparticles to nanobio things like hemoglobin and etc. One famous and interesting example of zero dimensional materials is quantum dots and I'll talk about the quantum dots in the next lecture. Okay, let's sum up these and previous lectures. Nanomaterials are defined as the materials that at least one of their dimensions fall into the nanoscale. Nanomaterials can be classified based on the different factors, such as their origin or being organic or inorganic material. Nanomaterials can be also classified based on their dimension, like a structure. In this sense, we have two-dimensional nanostructures like nanosheets, one-dimensional nanostructures like nanowires and nanotubes, zero-dimensional nanostructures such as the nanoparticles. In particular, about nanowires and nanotubes, Due to quantum confinement effects of one-dimensional nanomaterials, electrons and photons can only propagate through the lengths. This makes them very interesting for nanoelectronics and optical application. Lengths of one-dimensional nanostructures can be extended for hundreds of micrometers, while no other known material can produce such extreme lengths to diameter ratios. This makes them very good chemical and biological molecule detectors. Different materials can be mixed and ground together in nanowires, which gives them the capability to be used as the junctions in nanosystems. And let me show you the other lectures of this section and how it would work for you. Well, in the following, I have provided a couple of lectures regarding different types of nanomaterials, as you see here in the list. In the next lecture, I'll talk about quantum dot. After that, we focus on the carbon family and important allotropes of carbon nanostructures from graphene, graphene nanoribbons to carbon nanotubes and also foliary. Then following that are the types of the nanomaterials from nanocomposites, polymers, fibers, nanocoating, thin film. I highly recommend you to intake all these lectures because uh, there are valuable information in each of them and you can expand and deepen your knowledge by learning more, more about the variety of nanomaterials. Each of these lectures are like 5 to 10 minutes and quite worth watching. And don't forget to give me your comments in the Facebook community. How do you feel and what could uh, make this course a better learning module for you? Thanks for watching. See you in the next lecture.